Hey guys, welcome to LA Love Creative, and today we're talking about the Canon C70, my initial thoughts after shooting a project on it. If you haven't, make sure you hit the bell so you can stay notified when we post new videos. Cue the intro. Canon C70, I've had it for a week or so, and I have had a lot of experience with it. I've messed around with it shooting, you know, passion projects. I've now shot a actual um, fashion gig with this camera, and I felt like this is a good time to talk about some of the things that I just, you know, have learned using it, as well as a few tips for other people that are considering the Canon C70. Now, Canon colors, you either love them or you hate them. I know a lot of people like the skin tones that come out of Cam... Canon. Camon. I think I know a lot of people like the skin tones that come out of Canon cameras. And for the most part, I am in that, in that party. However, if you want something that's very filmic, um, straight out of the, you know, out of the get-go, I would say maybe lean towards more of it, more of the red Komodo or the, you know, Canon C200 because they have raw codecs and you can manipulate them a little bit better. I will say that after shooting with this camera, I think it has a Alexa-esque um, quality to it when you shoot with the skin tones and stuff like that. Obviously, it's not a Ari Alexa, but it has something similar to me in my opinion. Could be just the DGO sensor that's really just giving you such a milky, um, high dynamic range image. Um, but at the same time, if you're not a big fan of Canon colors, then this camera might not be for you because it still has that industry Canon standard. When I was shooting with this camera, I was blown away with the image. I was shooting a model in downtown and I just love the studio location we were shooting at and how it was just a perfect place for this camera to shine, to show different colors, to show different you know skin tones and the way it reacts to different types of white balances um, because we had you know daylight coming in through the window, pretty, pretty strong daylight coming through the window. But then we also, also had like a chandelier that was warm and then we had these overhead spotlights that were like really warm. So it was really cool to have you know, a good time to just try out different white balances and try out different ways to balance all that color-wise. Um, and I think it was a great stress test for the Canon C70. One tip I will say when you're shooting with this camera is expose correctly. I think a few other YouTubers have explained this before. Um, a lot of times people will expose to the right or they will, they will underexpose. Um, to get certain, you know, certain type of exposures when it comes to, you know, filming with cameras. I would say that the camera does okay in highlight recovery, um, and it does pretty good with shadow recovery, but I would say it's a camera that you should just probably just properly expose and you will be half the time happier than if you underexpose or if you, you know, overexpose. I really feel like this camera needs you to actually nail the exposure if you can. Um, I personally shoot a lot of like lifestyle work, documentary stuff where sometimes nailing exposure is not always going to be easy to do because you're moving so fast um, or you're in not in the best lighting conditions. But at the same time, this camera does have good highlight recovery and shadow recovery. It's just not on the level of like a raw codec. Another thing with this camera that might be a pro or a con for you as a creator is the stabilization inside is still just digital IS. So it's not the best. It's not on the level of like something like the Canon R5 or a Panasonic GH5, if anybody shoots with those anymore. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? Or stabilization in other cameras at the, on the market right now. 
Um, I would say it's not on that level, but it's good enough for a couple, you know, handheld shots. I personally have been using the Sigma 24 to 70 art lens. It's a great lens. What I love about this lens is not only is it a 2.8 and it's just a ama Sigma makes amazing glass. It's just amazing image, amazing, uh, amazing color and contrast. However, it also has a OS switch, which is actually basically their form of stabilization. And it's really rare to actually get a lens, a 24 to 70 with stabilization at 2.8. So it's really cool. I love this lens. And if you can avoid maybe the little micro jitters that you get from that from that lens, um, I still think it's a great option. Just be aware that you might get a little micro jitters with that. But the digital IS inside the camera, I feel either turn that off or just use the stabilization in a lens like this and you should be good to go. But it's not the best. So just keep that in mind. One thing I love about the Canon C70 and I've talked about this multiple times is yes, it's awkward looking when you actually shoot with the camera, you will be really, really surprised at how comfortable it is. It is very, very ergonomic. It's the functionality of this camera. You're going to love shooting with it. That's one thing that's going to maybe sway certain people or maybe piss a couple people off. I love the Sony FX9 and I think the FX6 looks really cool, but I know that shooting with those cameras, I'm gonna not feel as comfortable as I am with a camera like this. This camera is one of those cameras where you're holding it in your hand for five hours and you don't feel like you are. Editing with the Canon C70, I recently switched to PC. So now I'm editing on Premiere Pro pretty much exclusively. Um, and one thing I really love about the Canon C70 is even at the highest spec that it has, the highest codec that it has, I haven't had any problems editing this camera. I know people are having problems editing the Canon R5 images and I've had problems editing those images without transcoding. Um, but this camera, I have used proxies, but for the most part, just using Premiere and just using like maybe their half, uh, half quality setting when you're doing playback, I haven't had any problems. It's very smooth. The quality of the footage is amazing for it to be that smooth because this 4K is data hungry. It is a very thick, we'll call it thick. It's a thick codec. We like them thick. <laughs> what am I talking about? But as far as editing, I haven't had any problems editing this codec. And that is well, really, 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 really uh, surprising because it is a high quality codec. Autofocus. Now that I've had a better chance to mess with the autofocus on this camera, I have some thoughts on it. For one, it's way better than not having autofocus. And it's way better than most autofocuses on the market, um, aside from like Sony. Um, but at the same time, if you're comparing like the autofocus of this camera and the autofocus in like the A7S III or the Canon R5, they aren't, it's not on the same level, which obviously it's, it's not trying to be. Um, but at the same time, it's good. You can't rely on it like you would maybe the Canon R5 or the, uh, the Sony A7S III. But for the most part, if you are doing something, it's gonna lock on the face um maybe eight out of ten times and if it does fall off the face i find that if you're doing something with with multiple takes the first time it might mess up the second time you're probably going to get it so i personally would not just rely on it completely like those other cameras where you can really just rely on them but i would say autofocus wise i'd give it like a eight out of ten one thing i love about this camera is the indie filters on this camera i love the fact that you have six in stops of ND um, and it can go all the way up to 10 if you just go through the menu and just like adjust it. I love ND filters in a camera. It's one of the reasons why I couldn't mess with something like a red Komodo or uh, you know any type of camera like like a red or something like that other than the fact that I ain't got no money for no red. I'm broke! I'm broke! I just couldn't mess around with a camera that doesn't have ND filters now that I'm used to them. Memory cards. Thanks to all the people on YouTube in my last video I had a problem with my uh, Canon C70. I thought something was wrong with it. Um, then it, it was giving me buffering issues and I figured it was the memory card because I had a Lexar V90 card in the, in the camera and then I, I said it in the video and then everyone's like, yo, those cards ain't it. And I'm like, thank you. Um, so now I have Sony Tough um, V90 cards. So far, I haven't had any issues with them and that's from shooting 120 frames per second at the highest quality 180 frames per second 
uh, long versions of the camera. I even rented this camera out a few times already and no one's had a problem with it. So just know that you need a either a Sony tough, you know, V90 card or a pro grade, I think, uh, company. I think this is a company, uh, V90 card. After my first project with this Canon C70, I am blown away with the image quality, the functionality, the autofocus, the overall camera package. I love that it has everything I need. And for a filmmaker like me, who is run and gun, lifestyle, commercial work, but a lot of one man band stuff, I am a big fan of this camera and I think you will love it too if you're in that same type of uh, genre of work. That's all I have to say about the Canon C70. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to do another video on, and I will see you next time. See you later.